Thanks to the supporters of channel member Tim Stoker. Well, apparently, sometimes football manager gets a little bit too close to real life for comfort. Everything looked like it was going oh so very well. And then we went and lost against Brentford. Hello and welcome to part three of Rebuilding Arsenal. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you. What I was expecting to introduce is our first two big tests of the season because we're away against both Manchester United and Chelsea in the Premier League. And I thought we were going to be going into that game with some incredible form behind us. And largely, we have been, apart from the one little blot on the copybook we went away against Brentford lost 2-1 our only goal was an own goal as well we actually got knocked out of the Carabao Cup on penalties against Crystal Palace as well but that was a very rotated team so uh, yeah we've only conceded goals in one game all year we dominated against Southampton we dominated against Everton but for whatever reason things went a little bit wrong against Brentford as you can see, still a fairly strong side as well. So fingers crossed we don't see too much more of that today. The Premier League table is looking very nice and Brentford are actually doing pretty well as well. So maybe it isn't so bad that we lost to them. But now the fact we've got to go away against United and Chelsea is probably going to be quite problematic. But worry not, we have new players to take with us because we finished off uh, the transfer deadline. Um, we didn't manage to sell any more players. We did try and get a few more out the door because there were another two players we were trying to bring in on deadline day, but they were reliant on deals. Um, I actually signed two centre-backs because I thought Rob Holding was going to be leaving. We had a deal arranged for him to go, which he then turned down, and that kind of scuppered my plans to being, bring in Facundo Torres and or Kingsley Coman, who were both being arranged as well. So as it is, it looks like very weird deadline day business because we just signed Dan Axel Zagadou, who I told you about in the last episode. Um, he's coming for £8 million from Dortmund. And Matthias Ginter has come in from uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach. Yeah, uh, £8.5 million for him. So we've now got five centre-backs and we haven't got the extra creative midfielder or attacker that we were looking for. So it's a little bit unbalanced, very much still a work in progress. But we'll continue plugging away at that when we get to January. For now, the job is to get to January and stay competitive. Because if we look at what their media are expecting, media are expecting a fifth place finish. That seems like no media I've seen in real life this season. We're hoping to get into the Champions League this year, though, with, of course, the long term plan being winning a domestic double by the end of next season, just like Arsene Wenger did. Um, so this is the team that we're, we're going to be taking to Manchester United. You're going to get to see Kessie in an Arsenal shirt for the first time. Uh, Ginter and Zagadou both going to be sat down there on the bench, though, um, because there's no reason to break up this back four so far. This is why I mean, it's not ideal that we brought both of them in. Mistakes have been made already. Deadline day has already has already got me with the excitement and the panic of deadline day. Hopefully we don't end up regretting it. And ultimately, give it a year, we'll have a lovely balanced squad and they'll both be a part of it. But it looks a little bit lopsided at the moment towards the defence. So it's Ramsdale in goal, a back four of Tierney, Gabriel White and Tommy Asu. Party and Kessie is our tough tackling midfield base. And then Aubameyang, Odegaard and Saka supporting Latoro Martinez up front. I, uh, I am hopeful that... We've got the strength in midfield. The Brentford game, we didn't have Kessie in there. Um, that was the last game before he hit fitness. Um, so I'm hopeful that with the, the midfield of Party and Kessie, they're weirdly playing Ronaldo on the left wing. What is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer up to? What a silly boy. We've lost Saka after 32 seconds. This is what I was worried about. You start to get a few serious injuries and we don't really have any strength in depth. This is where... Kingsley Coman would have been really, really, really handy. As it is, I guess Pepe can have an opportunity. He's someone who I'd kind of already decided wasn't going to be good enough before the season even started. He hasn't really been given an opportunity. I guess the one upside, if Saka's going to be out for a little while now, which realistically, after getting injured after 30 seconds, he ain't going to be back for the Chelsea game, is he? It would be very unlikely for him to recover that quickly. So Pepe's probably going to get a little bit of a run of games and this is where he can force his way into my plans because top of my to-do list for January is probably still Kingsley Coman once we can find a way to fund him, hopefully getting Rob Holding out of the door to pay for Kingsley Coman. But if Pepe can show me that I don't need another winger, 
then maybe my mind can be changed. And this is Ronaldo on the left-hand side for Manchester United, crosses in to Cavani, who just heads comfortably past the keeper. I think it's Ben White who's there trying to compete in the air with Cavani. This is where we might have been better off playing someone like Zagadou today, knowing we were going to face some strong aerial threat. I would have assumed it was Ronaldo, um, but as it, as it is, it's Ronaldo delivering the cross. But either way, Ben White, probably of our four centre-backs, is probably the shortest and the weakest in the air. Um, that would be my guess. Anyway, you'd think as the manager, I would know that. Let's double check. How tall is Ben White? Um, yeah, 6'1". So he is shorter than all the others. He's 6'3". And I think Ginter's 6'3". And Zagadou's 6'5", I think. Yeah. Maybe should have thought this through a little bit. Um, but I don't think we're going to panic and make any changes. We're going to keep going as we are. Um, we've not we've not been terrible. If you look at the XG, it's it's one breakaway goal that United have scored from. And yes, it's frustrating, but we've actually played pretty well. And if we can find a way to nick a goal in this second half, we'd be very happy with a draw from this game. Any of these big away games, we're not expecting to win the Premier League this year. So a draw in one of these big away in some of these big away games would be fine. What is not fine is uh is going 2-0 down because it starts to make it look like we're not very good. I thought we were going to storm it after that last episode where we scored all those goals without reply. Maybe things aren't going to be as straightforward as I thought they might be. Um, Edison Cavani is causing all sorts of problems looking at that with his aerial threat. Um, and now Odegaard's injured. Tierney's injured. Oh, Green oh, Greenwood's not one of ours. That's fine. We don't mind him being tired. This is where the Gagan pressing becomes a problem. I don't know... Gagan pressing is going to be the answer in these big away games where we're going to be run around a lot. It's all well and good doing this at home against Newcastle, like you've already seen, but maybe we need to be a little bit more sensible in our build-up in these away games. We might do something a little different for the Chelsea game. Um, why is Smithrow not available? Is he... He must be injured for him to... <laughs> Can't you tell I'm still not picking my benches after all these years? Um, that's annoying because he's the one I'd want to bring on now. Um, well, we don't have much in the way of attacking options here, do we? Balogun's going to have to come on because he's the only attacker that we've got available. And I guess we're going to go two up top to get him on. And we're just going to try something a little bit different. What's his... Preferred position, advanced forward. We'll do that then. Put him up there as an advanced forward alongside Martinez. Um, what we don't have now is any kind of playmaker, which could be problematic. We've, um, I think this is a bit of a reality check for us today. It's not gone well, even though we did, like I said, we were all right in the first half, but we just, we haven't really carved out anything in the way of a proper chance. And it is, uh, it's not going as well as we'd hoped. Hopefully we can recover in time for Chelsea. That I mean, that's a that's a poor attempt at a finish from Cavani. We've got away with one a little bit there. Straight into the hands of Ramsdale. And at 2-0, I think at this point, we'd I'd probably be okay just cutting my losses and saying, yeah, we'll take a 2-0. We're worried about what's happened to Saka. That's what's really happening here. Tommy Asu been very quiet today after looking excellent in those first few matches. He's been very much on defensive duty today. Cross comes in. This time, White does get there ahead of Cavani. See, he's learned how to do it as the game's gone on. He's obviously been... He's still young. He's growing. He's getting taller all the time, and he can now win in the air against Cavani. Where was that skill earlier in the match? Um, I think Ronaldo has gone off for United at this point, because I'm not, I'm not noticed his name recently. I think Jesse Lingard maybe has come on for him. Um, but they are still on the attack. It's relentless. Wambasaka from the right-hand side. Cross comes over. Cavani does get there. Ahead of White again this time, but Ramsdale, you saw his hand poke up above the heads of everybody else. That's an animation I'm not sure I've seen before. Pepe with a corner. Can we get a consolation goal? Looking for Gabriel, can't find him. Martinez playing it back to party. And now Tavares, and can he find the cross? Go on, just cross the ball. Cross the football. He gives it to Kessie. Kessie floating over to Pepe, and he's hit the crossbar. 2-1, and I think we can take some positives out of the game. At the moment, the positive we take is that we've not been a million miles away for XG. We've been all right. 
we just we've looked like a mid-table team coming to a slightly better mid-table team. Uh, Ronaldo was still on at the end of the match, by the way. I just didn't notice him. And that was a poor result. We, oh, and that's a problem. A torn calf muscle for Saka, injured sprinting. Is that Gagan Press's first victim, do we think? That does look like a Gagan Press injury to me. What are we going to do against Chelsea? to be a little bit more conservative. Let's add a new tactic. Um, you know I love a vertical tiki tacker. Maybe we'll do something like that. And we'll try a vertical tiki tacker. We'll fiddle with that a little bit. And we'll try that against Chelsea because that Gagan press was a nightmare. So we've shuffled things around a little bit for the Chelsea game then. We're doing a vertical tiki tacker 4-3-3. Granite Xhaka coming into the team at the base of the midfield, Odegaard and Kessie ahead of him. I was tempted to go with Kessie and Partey, but it just felt like there was going to be nothing linking up the, th the midfield three with what was ahead of them. So I was tempted to have them and Odegaard out wide, but in the end, we've dropped Odegaard back in here. Pepe's going to be on the right-hand side with Saka injured. And um, yeah, hopefully this is going to contain the play a little bit better than what we did against Manchester United. If it doesn't work, then we can go back to the drawing board. Let's face it, we've got enough centre-backs now to try the wide centre-back thing at some point. But, yeah, I just hate three at the back. Chelsea are doing it. They're having a lovely... I hate three at the back. I just don't like it as a system. I don't like it in real life. I don't like it in Football Manager. But we've kind of accidentally ended up with a squad that it would probably quite suit because we're so... So heavy with centre-backs. Odegaard with the free kick. It would have been beautiful for that to pop into that top corner there. If we can have this as our away from home in a big game tactic and use the Gagan press to steamroll over the weaker teams at home, then that's fine because that that means we're using the Gagan press less frequently. So we're less likely to tire our players out with it and gives us a way to be a little bit tighter away from home because the Brentford game was away. The Manchester United game was away and it is away from home we seem to have been a little bit iffy so far. Um, but we've started pretty brightly in this one. We're ahead on every stat, although Chelsea have a corner here, but Gabriel heads clear um, and Latoro Martinez does well to get onto the end of the clearance. Now Odegaard trying to release a Bamiyang, but he can't. Now Timo Werner's in, um, but Ramsdale is there to make the save. Are they playing with Werner up front? Where is Lukaku? Not that I'm complaining. I'm quite happy to not have to face Lukaku, but um, it... It's very interesting. Unless they're playing Werner out wide, maybe. We'll have a look in a second when we're back on the uh, in between the screen. Odegaard playing it out to Tierney, who's uh, going, charging down as an overlap on this left-hand side. Abamyang's tucked in field, and he's found Abamyang, whose shot is saved by Mendy, but it's another bright attack from us, and we get another opportunity from a corner. It's going to be Odegaard with the outswinger from this left-hand side. It evades everybody, and he's cleared by Havertz to Mason Mount, who is waiting inside the centre circle, but Tierney is there to collect. So it's Werner up front with Havertz and Mount behind him. Have they got Lukaku on the bench? They don't have Lukaku on the bench, so maybe we've lucked out here and we're playing against them and Lukaku's injured, which would be perfect. Kessie now playing it in towards Tierney. Tierney's picked up a knock. Um, we've got Tavares on the bench, I think we have, so it looks like we're going to have to bring him on. We'll try and nurse Tierney through until half time, but the players are starting to drop like flies which is not ideal. Tommy Asu, we know he's got a good cross on him. Looking for a Bamiyang at that far post. It's been such a dangerous attacking route for us so far this season, but a Bamiyang not able to get past the goalkeeper this time, denied by that post. Um, and we are going to have to take Tierney off at half time. A tight thigh is what he's suffering from. So um, we'd, we'd be happy with this. If we ended up finishing nil-nil here, I could cope with that. Tavares is going to come on for the second half. Um, nil nil just just keep going boys um, I, I don't know that Chelsea I don't think Chelsea are doing the wide centre back thing we'll have a look we should by now have had our um, had our staff work out what they're doing and it should be on the tactic screen that we can have a look at in a second um, which button do you click you click that one I think don't you so they are, they've got Rudiger playing as a wide centre back but Aspilicueta on the other side is playing as a normal centre back that seems Interesting. Um, Rudiger on the left playing as the wide centre-back. Um, but it is Chelsea 
with the free kick, playing it into Mason Mount, who's got in behind us for a second there, but dawdled and ended up giving the ball away. And that's poor from Ramsdale. The low cross has come in and Ramsdale should have, it even says at the bottom, it's an error by Ramsdale. It's straight at him. It's into his hands. He's got both hands on it and he just spills it into the path of Timo Werner, who scored his first goal of the season. This is, oh, I guess you could claim he was unsighted by Ben White at that near post. But now the question is, what do we do here? We've got 20 minutes to go and we need to, we need to find a route back into the game. So I think we go to this. I think we shuffle everything around a little bit. Pepe is broken, so needs to come off. So Smith Rowe can come on for him. Um, if we shuffle everything around in here, I might put Smith Rowe in there actually as that. And what else have we got on the bench? Martinelli or Balogun or part. I'm leaving it for now. Um, but we are going to be going a little bit more attacking. What's going on here? Are they both injured? So that's Pepe and Rudiger. I think have collided with each other and both limping off. Pepe's already being substituted here. So we can just get our sub on quick, please. And hopefully get up there and strike while Rudiger's injured. In fact, they've had to bring Saar on for Rudiger. So this is an opportunity for us here. Odegaard trying to get up above his fullback, but can't. But it's Tommy Asso now playing into Odegaard again. This is an opportunity for us. Odegaard with the cross. Abamyang. Oh, he's had two opportunities at that far post today. He's hit the post with one, the crossbar with another on another day. We're beating Chelsea here, but it just doesn't seem to be going our way today. Aubameyang and Odegaard both tiring. Martinelli's going to have to come on. This is this is where I think we are suffering a little bit from not having that one extra attacker that I wanted. I think you really benefit in this situation from having that extra attacking body that you can throw on. Uh, but Martinelli's going to come on on this left-hand side. And it's Odegaard with a set piece to Ben White. And he's there with the header. And it's one all, although the ref looks like he's checking with VAR. Everyone's very still for a minute. It is a goal review. And the goal's disallowed. We're back to this, are we? I thought things had changed in the last episode when we had a goal review and the goal stood. But um, yeah, we're back to good old football manager now. And goal reviews are just going to punish us. We're going to, uh, we've gone attacking. We're demanding more. But I think we're going to end this episode with two defeats. We knew this was going to be a big test today. I guess it would have been a little bit too much to ask for just a couple of signings to turn this Arsenal squad around into title to get title contenders. And it's pretty clear now that we haven't done. But we are tucked in nicely into that top six. We've got the top scorer in the Premier League. Not that you'd know it for today. I guess we'd have taken 12 points from our first seven games. What we're less happy about is losing three of our last four. There's grumbling from Arsenal Fan TV, I'm sure. Right, we are going to play through now to the Spurs game. We've actually got a nightmare run of games at the start of defend, uh, December. Spurs, Man City, Liverpool. So we'll come back tomorrow for Spurs and Man City. That'll be at 11 a.m. Weekend episodes will be in the 11 a.m. slot. So we'll do 11 a.m. tomorrow, Spurs and Man City, and then 11 a.m. on Sunday, we'll come back and do the January transfers when hopefully we can rebalance this squad a little bit. That didn't go as planned today. If you've enjoyed that, though, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.